Okay, as a follow-up to what Mr. Manship just said, there were serious signs in our case that right from the beginning, from the moment that CPS was placed in foster care, that the officials at CPS had no intention of returning her to us, but really wanted to place her permanently with the foster family she had been placed with, and that the foster family themselves had stated from the beginning that they wanted to adopt Sabrina. Clues as to this collaboration was that officially in juvenile court, uh, the parents are supposed to go through one year of following a service plan by CPS where the CPS plan officially is reunification and then they're supposed to have every quarter of a year follow-ups in court as to how they're, they're doing on this and, and then only after one year is CPS supposed to change the goal from reunification to adoption. But six months into our trial, certain things appeared, such as a memo that the CPS supervisor, Kevin Daly, sent to our lawyers in which he stated that he thought Sabrina's foster family would also make an excellent adoptive family in the event of a termination of parental rights. So this showed clearly his bias in favor of the foster family. And also, as it was approaching the one year mark, both our side and the foster family were asked by Esther Wiggins Lyle to make videos of their interactions with Sabrina. And during this time, we were having supervised visitations with Sabrina. And Kit and I made a video of our interactions. And at the same time, the Foster family made a video of their interactions with Sabrina at their home and we were each allowed to view each other's videos before the final hearing. Well, lo and behold, when Kit and I were looking at the video that the Foster family had made, there was a scene in that video where one of the members of the Foster family's own family, one of their parents was overheard saying, let's show this video to Sabrina on her wedding day. And this event was total, that comment was totally inappropriate for a member of a foster family to make, especially on, on, on videotape, when they were supposed to be acting in the capacity of a temporary caretaker for Sabrina, while Sabrina was supposed to be being helped to reunite with her biological family. But this, this shows, again, a, a, a problem where when parents who are supposed to act as foster parents are also allowed to be adoptive parents, it's a clear conflict of interest and a, a, and a, a, a clear bias against biological families. And that's a, a serious problem that needs to be corrected in the foster care system.